Hey Space Cats, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dr. Maggie Liu and I have been missing in action for a little while. Um, you might have noticed that my videos have been a little bit infrequent and that's my bad on my part because I've just been held up on moving house and then um, all my teaching at university which has been super stressful um, and then also all of this astronaut application stuff. Um, hopefully I'm going to be getting back on track to that soon so you'll be seeing more of my regular vid videos <laughs> very soon. Um, but today I'm back with Lionel Matria and we are going to do some astronaut talk again. Um, this is another update for us on our uh, journey to applying to be an ESA astronaut um, with their 2021 program. So, hey, Leanna, hey. now. Hey, Maggie, you good. I'm doing good. And you? I'm good. Let's talk about, I think last time we spoke, you'd already done your medical um, tests and yes. I've not talked about it yet well I hadn't done it yet so I couldn't talk about it and so you couldn't talk about it either we were going to wait to do it together so um yeah let's jump into it so um I actually applied to do my medical quite late into the selection process you know we had a two-month window to uh submit our entire application yeah. and I was like okay I've slacked off for an entire year due to the pandemic before the pandemic I was at the gym every single day at least an hour and I was just like very fit and healthy but I'm sure like many of you um, when the pandemic struck the gyms were closed I have incredibly bad hay fever so I don't like um, exercising outdoors especially in the UK weather where it's always raining pretty much and always hot <laughs> Um, so the exercise went down, the health went a bit down because I was constantly next to my fridge. So I was like having chocolates and crisps. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> and it was just very difficult to stay in that like healthy fit regime. Um, so I booked it pretty much like two weeks to the end of the um, application process to have my medical. Um, which was fine. Um, I think Lionel was a bit worried for me because yes, I was <laughs> be able to apply. Uh, one thing was that um, so for the ESA astronaut program, you're supposed to have a European pilot, uh, private pilot uh, medical test. Yeah. Um, but in the UK, we pretty much stopped doing that everywhere since Brexit happened. Yeah, originally they were one of the few places in the UK that offered the European one. But when I went to book it, mm -hmm. when I booked the European one, it automatically converted to the UK one. And then I wrote to them and I was like, oh, I need a European one. Yeah. They were like, oh, we don't, almost nowhere does that now. Um, yeah, but I think that, I think ESA is pretty flexible. If you have yeah. only the UK one, it's fine. Yeah, so thankfully um, the UK could do the UK one and Canadians could do the like American side one. I did the Swiss one, but it's rated. Uh, I mean, it's recognized also uh, outside of Switzerland. So it's it's basically the same exam as the uh, European one, but it's. I, I don't think it's Swiss the same specific. exam, but it's a different. It's a different like credited. Yeah. So book that, which was fine, and then um, when I went. It was quite a simple test. I think maybe it took an hour or so. Yeah, a bit more for me, but yes. But we had to do, like before I even went for the medical exam, I had to have a separate um, optometrist exam, an eye exam. Yeah. And so the eye exam just covers the typical things that you would do at uh, when, you're, when you're going for an eye test for yeah. glasses, whatever. But there were some additional um, exercises that you had to do, so uh, like peripheral um, movement things. And I actually did them uh, at the medical test, not during the uh, the, the first test uh, at the optometrist. Opto what? Optometrist. Okay. So, so I, I did it at the at, with the medical during the medical test, and not at the optometrist. Yeah. 
Yeah, so I did all of them at the optometrist, but actually when I went to the medical test, um, so for example, for the color blindness, apparently yeah. they didn't do enough like um, tests for me. So I had to do like a few extra examples on their booklet as well, just to yes. make sure that they had enough of them. Yeah, so there was an ECG, they measure yeah. uh, electromagnetic pulses for your body. Is that what an ECG does? It's the uh, the electric pulses uh, through the heart uh, yeah. to see how the electric current is going through the heart and, and is uh, um, driving the heart um, all the way from the first steps to the last steps of the, the beating process. Um, so it's it's quite interesting. I actually spent like I think half an hour discussing with the, the doctor uh, about this uh, so I could understand the, the peaks and the, all the, the, the dips and, and the things in this uh, ECG. So it was really interesting. I don't remember everything now, but uh, it was really interesting. And he explained, showing to me like a, a model of the heart and, and saying, okay, you have the pulses like, that goes like this. And with these kind of electrodes, you, you see this. And if it would be uh, problematic, then you would have these kind of shapes in the, in the ECG. And so it was really interesting. We also did like some tests, like moving my joints around and stuff. Yeah. And then um, also like junk tests. I don't know if you've like ever had a junk test before going into like uh, queuing into a nightclub and like the bouncer says like, oh, you have to do these things to test whether or not you're drunk. <laughs> so no, I'm, I haven't done that. <laughs> so it's things like um, standing on one leg and then like tapping your nose and going oh, yes. yeah. hands out and stuff like that. And so that's what they do like when you're drunk and seeing if you can walk perfectly in a straight line and funny yeah way. actually i remember I, I did the i did those but it was really quick it was <laughs> I, it just took a few seconds and that was it i feel like those are like hard like when you're sober let alone when you're drunk but it brought back all the memories of like trying to get into nightclubs <laughs> And so, I, I've never had any issues on this. <laughs> the excuse was like, oh, but I can't even do this when I'm sober. How can you say it's because I'm drunk? So you've passed the, the test? I did pass those tests. <laughs> um, yeah. I had a urine test as well. Yes. And um, I actually failed on that. Blood is something that they test in your urine. And I had a, a small amount of blood. And it's really annoying because... This puts like girls at dif disadvantage yeah. because, for example, when you're on a period, a week, a month, then that's already like two weeks shorter that we've had compared to the men to actually sure. test. Um, yeah, so in the end, um, I didn't like fail the exam, but they just put it on hold until I could get two more clear results. And it was just really frustrating having urine tests until I got like two in a row. But eventually you passed it, so... I passed it right on the last day. Yeah. Um, well, thankfully we got, I think, three weeks extension mm -hmm. from the additional, um, I think it was Lithuania joined the ECS yes. program. So we had a bit of an extension for them, thankfully. Two weeks before the actual deadline, I got my urine results and they were all fine. When they sent me the medical certificate through the post, it just never showed up. Oh no. Yeah. So on the very last day, like the very, very last, well, the day the before the last day, I emailed okay. them and I was like, did you ever get around to like sending out my medical certificate? And they were like, yeah, we sent it ages ago. Has it not come? I drove over there on the day of the deadline to pick up a, another copy, a new yeah. copy that they made for me. And um, the practice where I originally had the exam, they had moved to the other side of the city. And I had like 20 minutes to get over there before, well, I had 30 minutes to get over there before it closed. And like the doctor went home and I couldn't collect it. And thankfully I got there in time. Anyway, I think they would have understand if you would have sent, if you would have sent an email to the um, uh, recruit, uh, recruiting team, it would have been fine, I, I guess. Yeah, there was like, we can also access like an online portal with the medical certificate as well, but it's not signed and stamped. So I was yeah. kind of worried that they wouldn't accept it like that. 
good. Okay, so tell me about your medical experience. Yeah, yeah it was a long time ago. It was, I think, in uh, May. I think it was beginning of May or something. Um, I, I actually took the opportunity to do it before the the official opening of the uh, of the uh, astronaut selection. And uh, I think it was good because it was really easy to get an appointment. Uh, it took just a few days to to, to call the, the 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 practitioner and then just to 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 have an appointment. So it was really easy and it was really cool to do it because it was the first time for me to that I, I've done some this kind of tests. And uh, so it was nice to have the ECG to have a, 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 a broad. Uh, tests uh, on, on, on everything and have a, a nice discussion with the, the, the doctor. Uh, so it was really interesting. I loved it. I had no issue with the uh, with the urine tests. I had no issue with any of the tests. So it was was all good. Did you have uh, any additional tests that you had to do? So, well, of course, all the reflexes. So, you know, the, this little hammer that they, they hit you almost everywhere on the body uh, to, to check the, the nerves. So that was that was something that you, you haven't said. Um, what did I do else? Oh, the um, the hearing um, earring also. So um, so we had to 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 close our our ears and and to check if we could hear uh, on one direction on the other direction if he was moving around to check that we could hear everything and uh, yeah. So that was also another test that I did. And basically that was it. Yeah, I think you said everything. I did uh, one thing that I didn't mention that I remember now as well was like a questionnaire about like your mental health as well. Oh, no, I haven't done that. Did you not do that? Okay. No. They asked a, about like, like your, ha, how to, if you were happy at work and <laughs> like how the pandemic was going and like, just to see if you're like depressed or not. Have you ever thought about suicide? But he was like, he was actually taking notes when he asked you yeah, these questions. There was like a, like a list of questions. Ah, okay. No, I have, well, maybe he did it. I don't know because we discussed know, all that. along the uh, the, uh, the the tests. Uh, so maybe he actually wrote things down. But I, I think it was for me just casual chat. So it was. Uh, I, I haven't noticed anything. No, I this, for mine, it was like the first thing we did. It was on the computer. She was doing yeah. it, and like. She, she was asking about like exercise and stuff and I was telling her about like how I used to go to the gym every day and now I'm like don't go at all. <laughs> yeah actually you said that but for me it was quite the opposite with the pandemic. Uh, so as you know um, when I was in Madrid I was doing quite a lot of sport uh, but not heavily let's say. Um, when I came here uh, back here in Switzerland uh, beginning of last year when the pandemic started, um, I actually started to run because there was no other way to do any sports. So I, I actually bought uh, shoes, I bought a lot of uh, uh, gears and everything and just go out and run. And since I started that, I at some point I was running every two to three days, uh, five to ten k kilometers. And, uh, and and that was that that put me in a very good shape and uh, until I think I think I was doing this until end of last year, so maybe November, December, and then with winter I I, I decreased a bit uh, the training, and uh, and then yeah now I'm I'm picking up again uh, again because I had quite a stressful time at work as well beginning of the year until June July, and now I'm starting again to to exercise a bit. So yeah, actually the 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 test when I did the test in May. I was fit, but I was not running as much as I was la end of last year, so it was not as good as I wanted. But uh, but still, I passed everything, and well, it's quite easy to pass this test. I think anybody in quite good health and good shape can do it. You don't need to be an athlete. You don't need to to do sport every week actually to pass it. It's right. fairly easy to pass. Yeah, I agree. And there will be like further medicals further into the selection process. Yeah. But I think it's not going to be the next step. Well, right. The next step is the psychological tests, I think. Psychological tests. Yeah. And then the tests after the psychological tests will be the psych psychometric tests. I think so. And then it's going to be the medical tests. So we still have two steps 
before to reach the medical test? You know what I'm most worried about is the swim test. Now oh. I can swim, but I'm not like a strong swimmer. Well, so my goal next is just to practice to swim as much as I can. Sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, but anyway, as we said, as they said, and as we said actually in, in previous videos, uh, they don't look for athletes. They don't look for people that are really good at everything. They look at people that are good at everything and not bad at anything. So, so that's that's basically what they're looking for. I wouldn't even say I'm a good swimmer. <laughs> I, Come on. I, swim. I, I mean, I go diving, right? So I can dive, I can swim, but I'm not a strong swimmer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you can go faster than me. <laughs> I haven't seen much in my life, but uh, yeah, I need to start. I need to 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 do it properly. And there's a lot of places in the UK where people go wild swimming, so I really want to take that up. But I, I'm also scared about dirty water. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah, I'm actually living uh, uh, near uh, uh, the lake, so I can actually go swimming there. I'd like to that to do that. Be nice. Lucky you. So you've got this amazing like environment to to exercise. Switzerland is pretty good and the weather is usually nice as well. So yeah, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> so um, also ESA announced um, how many people applied yeah. in the end. Yes. Um, shall we have a little talk about that? Yes, of course. And that was, I don't know, I, I at the same time I was surprised by the number and on the other side, I was kind of surprised that the number was not that that high. I was expecting actually higher numbers. So the, the number that, that they said was like 22,500. It's called more than, 20, more than 22,000 candidates have applied, which is 260% uh, more of what we had uh, of in 2008. So it's a tremendous increase. Yeah, and that's, that's still a lot. That's a lot. That's like uh, four times, uh, almost four times the number we they had in uh, in 2008, right? It was 800, uh, 8,000 or something. 8,000, so about three. Yeah, three times, three times, less, not four times. Less yeah. than three times. Yeah, three times. So still, um, it's going to be difficult to go to the next step. <laughs> I mean, I was, I wasn't actually expecting that many because when I went to my medical, I was asking my um, the doctor about how many people had yeah. been applying for it because you have to say what like pilot license you're going for. Yeah. And at their practice, they only had like ten applicants, mm -hmm. and they were from all over the UK. So like some went came from like Bristol or Leeds all the way yeah. to Birmingham for their medical, which but is then, quite but then when. Where did the people do the, the, the test? Because in the United Kingdom, you had like 1,400 people applying. Well, there are other practices as well. So it's not this only practice in the entire UK. Okay, yeah. But still, only 10 for this yeah. one? Yeah. Yeah. That was, okay. I was surprised. Uh, well, that was when I applied. That was like two weeks before the deadline. So there may have been like some after. And then, yeah. then also we had the three week extension. So mm -hmm. I, I I asked also as well uh, to my doctor when I went and it was I was definitely the first one because he he didn't know about that. It was the, I was really the first guy he he he, he did the, the, the test on. So the, I was talking to you about this before as well. Was that um, that we weren't allowed any medicals, and they um, opened the pilot medicals especially for this, ah, okay. the astronaut applications, and they said because um, these uh, medicals are for private pilots, so it's mm -hmm. for leisure and it's not for work, so it's not a commercial yeah. pilot medical. The commercial pilot medicals. Um, have been extended for like another year or something on their expiration date because of the pandemic but the pilot medicals pilots should like private pilots should not be flying during the pandemic oh, okay. and so that was why they'd stopped doing it for the entire year and only opened it for the astronauts and what, what do you think about uh, france with all these people applying yes yeah, so we have like the list 
the breakdown list of like yes. different countries, how many males and females that have applied. And it was France that had the most. So out of the 22,000, France has... 7,137 applicants. That's a lot. That's like a, th a third of the... How many countries are there? Yeah, uh, actually, if you look at, I think, I don't know if it was ESA or, or another uh, uh, entity that, that did this uh, graph, but you have uh, somewhere on the internet, I guess you can you can put it on, on the screen uh, for the video, uh, there's a map of Europe with the, the, the different countries with the number of applicants per number of uh, habitants in, in the, in, with respect to the population in, in these countries. And you can see that all the, 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 the countries that are speaking French are quite high uh, rated in this, uh, in this graph. Um, I think it was like uh, um, different colors of, of red, red colors. And you can see that they are really bright, the, the, the ones uh, uh, with French speaking people. And I guess it's the influence of Thomas Pesquet uh, in the last years. You have, I mean, Thomas did so many things and so many uh, uh, talks all around Europe uh, in the French-speaking countries and also um, on the uh, on the internet with the social media. Uh, I think the French speakers will know about that uh, and knew about the, uh, about the selection because of Thomas Pesquet and that's maybe why this number is really high. That was one theory, right? Because yeah. Thomas Pesquet did so much outreach for it. Yes. Um, I guess, but the second highest on there was actually Germany as well, so 3,700. Yeah, and it's a huge gap with, uh, with France. <laughs> a huge gap with France. What, why do you think um, Germany had so high as well? Well, Alexander Guest. I guess he's doing also outreach in his country, and and he's one of the of the last uh, astronauts who who flew on on the ISS. So that's my I, theory. I've seen quite a bit of media in the UK publicizing it, but I was a bit disappointed about the numbers. Yeah, yeah, just below two thousand. It's it's uh, quite a few, but not a lot. <laughs> I think I made like a plot of the. Um, uh, of the different countries with respect to the females and like the fraction of females, I think for Slovenia it was, was incredibly high. But yeah, yeah, well, anyway, the numbers are quite impressive. And uh, the, the, the very interesting thing that Isa said during the press conference when they announced the number, I think is the number of people that will go to the next step. So among these 22,000 people, they will select only 1,500 people to go to the next step. I know. So it's it's a huge yeah. selection that they're they're going through now. Uh, I don't know when we will have the answers, but I guess they will start to 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 say to the people that they were selected. I guess they will start in the next week, maybe, because they wanted to start beginning of July. To, to say the, 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 the selected people, to say to the selected people to come over to Hamburg to do the, the, psycho the psychological, psychological tests. Uh, so I guess it's going to start very soon. I think so too. But I'm now... The, a month after the deadline, right? So... Yeah. So it was supposed to be beginning of June, uh, July, sorry. So... But with the extension period because of the Lithuania, uh, then it's going to be mid-July, I guess. I guess so. Yeah. It's going to be really difficult to choose people out of that, that criteria. Already, it's quite a difficult criteria to be an astronaut. You need a master's degree. You need, like, yeah. loads of experience. Like, the, the criteria already were really strict. So it's going to be <laughs> hard to narrow it down. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see. And, and they said again that they are going to go through all the CVs and motivation letter. So it's going to be a huge work. I don't know how many people are working now on this at ESA. Yeah. It's 
incredible. But that's nice because we took time to do this, uh, uh, this, this, this motivation letter and the CV. So at least they take also time to review all of them. Yeah. So that that's that's also encouraging. Do you do you think you'll stand a chance? Well, that's what I wanted to say. My goal really is to go to the next step. So I want to have at least one set of tests in person um, because I want to learn from, from the people I will be with. I want to learn from the tests and uh, to be even more prepared for the next selection uh, in, I don't know, uh, five, six, seven or ten years. I don't know when they will do the next one. But I know that the chance to really be an astronaut is really small uh, but i i think i can make it to the next step and that would be my goal if i make it to the next step i would be really happy me too but i'm not so sure i will make it to the next step well, i cannot be sure we cannot be sure i feel like really jealous about the people with disabilities because there was like 256 i think um 256 i think um applicants with disabilities yeah. and one of them will definitely be chosen so well okay statistically statistically speaking they have more chances to be selected but I, there should have been more applicants with disabilities there are a lot of people with disabilities up. yeah but the 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 criteria were uh, were quite uh, narrow. narrow yeah, yeah that's true that so it was actually only specific kind of disabilities that could apply. Oh, let me, oh yeah, I have it here. Yeah, 257 applicants with disabilities, including 60 women. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting. I really look forward to going to Hamburg and, and do this uh, psychological test. And it's also, yeah. sorry? You can do it. I hope, well, you can do it too. Um, I'm sure you can do it. Uh, it's going to be really interesting because if I remember well, uh, I think I checked uh, a few months ago now, I don't, I'm not sure I remember why, but I think in 2008, when during the last election, they did the psychometric tests before the psychological tests. Oh. And, and now they switched. I think we have the psychological test before the psychometric test, which is weird to me, because it means that all the 1,500 people will go in front of one person and talk to that person uh, I guess to, to do the psychological test. So I think it's going to require way more time to do it and also involvement from uh, from ESA uh, uh, people. I mean, the, 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 the yeah, it's going to be huge, a huge work for ESA um, with respect to the last election. I don't know why they switched. The psychological tests are like, I, I'm like quite kind of scared of them because there's like, so you, there's nothing that you can practice on for yeah. that like you're either cut out with the personality of an astronaut or you're not mm -hmm. and I, I think I've told you this before I don't have the character to be an astronaut so I'm not sure I don't know I I think you have because you want to be an astronaut and you you've done so many things in outreach you've done so many things with astronauts already and you 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 know the environment you you know you have a lot of knowledge so i think but all in all you have the, the of an astronaut from all the astronauts that i've met are very calm and very kind of i don't know very different to me i guess so. well okay i haven't seen you uh, being really angry and and, and everything so I, I guess you're quite calm as well <laughs> <laughs> i joke about everything yeah, if you joke about everything, it's a good thing, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We've been talking for ages now, for almost Already? like, yeah. So we have to cut this one short, um, yeah. but next time. Let us know in the comments section below what you want me and Leah now to talk about next. Hopefully we won't leave it until the next psychological test or psychometric test. Maybe you want to go through some tests with us. Anyway, let me wrap up. So uh, thank you guys for watching. Um, as always, if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to leave us a like, share and subscribe.